Hey Woodlanders, welcome back to Woodlog 9B, a continuation of epic tractor action. I make no apologies for the tractor B-roll, so uh, hope you enjoy this one. Thanks for watching. A little ongoing issue we have on our track is for some reason the sat nav brings them down the track, brings lorries down. I've had Arctics down here and all manner. And I've reported it to Google saying that this isn't, it is a road, but of course you can see it ain't doing very well, is it? And, and it looks, well, we've had something gone in the ditch here, look, <clears throat> lorries, and they slide off the track into the ditch. And then it looks like in the last, in, since uh, in two days, so yesterday, we've had another one go. So we've got some wheelings there, look. We've got some great big divot there, look, where somebody's got stuck and that. And there were some abandoned timbers where they obviously tried to leave themselves out. Uh, I don't know what else to do about it. If you report it to Google Maps, then it's not really suitable for motor vehicles and they still wouldn't use it. Can't help them. But it's very frustrating because the tracks are rightless now. soon so close to getting finished I've got a couple of branches here look and there's a couple of branches down there and my shear pin has just snapped uh, which that's what they're designed for save the tractor but I haven't got any spanners I've got some spare shear pins but I've got no spanners so it's whether I can finger tighten it we'll take a look yeah, he's got a nylock nut on it, look, so uh, I might be very limited on what I can do out in the field. Line it up, off we go. I'm going to try and get my hand at the back of there, which could be very interesting. Right, so I've got the new one in, but it's not very tight, so I'm going to try my best. A bit more tightening. Get my fingers covered in grease at the back of here and just get the nylock nut to nip and that stay put I've got one spare one the idea being if we can just get finished today I'm just look 10 or 15 minutes that's all it would be I think just this ash is that hard just knocked out the shear pin so there's a new one in nuts on the back and then just got it covered in grease all over the camera. You stay there a minute. That's it.
Ah, so the shear pin held out, which is great news. I will tighten it all properly when I get back. Um, so, that's all the brass done. Now, I admit it isn't quite garden tidy, but these little twiggy bits are so dead, when you stand on them, they're just all snapped to bits, and ash is quite brittle anyway. Um, so the next job is to get all the ash uh, cordwood stacked. This will all be firewood. There's some poles in there. I could probably use for craft work, so I've left some about eight foot long just in case I can do any hurdles out of them. But most of this is firewood. It's actually not as badly affected by ash dieback in the lower part of the stems as I imagined. Uh, I marked up all the trees that were dead, dying, sorry, last autumn. Well, you could tell because the tops are just no, nothing in them. There's one tree I missed, which is just over there. Um, However, saying that, yes, the tops have died and they're so brittle, just shattered to pieces. The main stems have still got life in them and can still be used as a, as a product, which I'm surprised at because I, I thought they'd be so far gone. But it seems it's about the top third of the canopy that it has gone or is going. Now, these are all so far. There's that one there, doesn't look very well. Just a quick observation. But all these other ones were still alive last autumn. But ash dieback changes so quickly that all these could well be dead by the end of summer again. In which case they will be thinned again. Thin the ones that are, that are dying. I try and leave ones in. If they're surviving, I'll leave them in. But this is where we're going to be planting our rubinia, so we have got to have a bit of a tidy up. Anyway, I'm glad that's done for today. I've been down the bottom end. I heard a tractor up here. It's been flailing. Flailing the hedges, they call it. It's a side arm flail they put on a tractor. I'm not a massive fan of it, really. It makes a bit of a mess. I'd much rather see a hedge laid traditionally every sort of eight to ten years, but I do understand why farmers do it. I mean, this by two hours, all this was done. If somebody was to let this grow every 10 years, you're looking at weeks and weeks worth of work. But uh, looks like the track's got even worse now. <laughs> oh dear. I even think the farmer's uh, tractor went down the ditch. Look. Stay out of that one. So that concludes another wood log. Thanks again for watching this one. Sorry, it's been an epic tractor series this one got some different stuff going on next week so you'll enjoy that so uh, for now if you've not subscribed yet please consider subscribing that'd be great have you on board and if you're new thanks for joining us got some exciting stuff coming up in the next few weeks so we'll see you on the next one